Here we have another video from Shaky Hand Productions, and we're going to design a common source amplifier for minus 65, and we're going to see how process variations of IS, N, and the thermal voltage, and the uh, essentially the early voltage, plus the variances in R1 and R2, RD and RS affect the gain. So first we're going to assume a common source amplifier with RS shorted and AC. That'll give us the maximum gain. And will give us some sta uh, DC stabilization. First thing I want to know though is that minus 65 possible. Well, based on experience, uh, it should be in weak inversion. So we'll go through these equations again. AV is minus GM RD parallel with RO. And we're trying to find what's the maximum possible gain without RO affecting you. Well, that's RD smaller than RO, and that's that equation. Plugging this in with GM and weak inversion, we can calculate for the 2N7000 that the maximum gain we're going to get is about 106. So, yes, it should be possible to do minus 65 gain. Now, now that we know that, what's the smallest AV max if ISN thermal and VA can vary by 10%? When we start looking through these equations, and I just start multiplying, uh, obviously V max or VA max by 0.9 will be the minimum, and N maximum uh, thermal voltage maximum should give us the minimum possible gain which is just in this analysis minus 78 okay and what could the possible so bottom line even if these process parameters vary right I should still be able to get 65 all right so it's still worth uh, working out now this is still just a rough estimate we haven't actually put it into a circuit yet all right now that we have shown a gain of minus 65 now we need to design r1 r2 rd rs and bdd which you have seen in my notes prior i like to choose 10 microamps because that's the onset of weak inversion you can follow my other examples okay I set RD equal to a tenth of RO, which is uh, 246 kilo ohms. Closest one that you should be finding in your kit is 249 kilo ohms. And I choose RS equal to RD. Then I solve VDD in a way that we've done many times before. We have to, we got the voltage drop across RS, across RD, and VDS. Since ID equals R, since RD equals RS, let's just multiply by a factor of two. That's the minimum voltage for uh, to be in the current constant current source region of a MOSFET, and this takes into account the gain. And I round it up to seven volts. Okay. Now we need to size R1 and R2. We have VGS equals the ideality factor times the thermal voltage times the log of the drain current divided by IS, I get about 1.46 volts. VS equals 2.49 volts now. And then VG is the sum of these. And if I assume R2 equals a kilo ohm, I can solve for R1, 75K. And there's the final design, all right? And this should work if everything equaled what I thought it would. However, we know that these resistances can vary by 5%. And it's possible that these process parameters can vary by 10%. So that's a lot of variables to look at, all right? And we just start with a small signal model. I'll set RL equal to infinity because it's the scope, all right? And this gives me my equation with RO and, and VA. And you can see how ID factors in, but how does ID vary with VGS, okay? 
Well, VG equals VDD with this voltage divider, and VS is RS times ID. But we run into a problem with trying to solve for VGS because VGS is in the exponent here, but not here. So you have to solve numerically. Now you can do this in Excel, and I did, but that's beyond the scope of today's video. After going through um, and making some, you know, intelligent decisions, I can find that the maximum gain is when RS is at a minimum, R1 is at a maximum, R2 is at a minimum, IS is at a minimum, N and VT are a max, RD is max, and VA is at a max, and you can get about minus 100 if every, if all of these conditions happened. You get the minimum gain by reversing every relationship over there, and your drain gain can actually drop to minus 39, meaning you could just design your circuit, pull the parts out of the box, and you might see a gain of 100 or a gain of 39, and your design would still be considered working. Now, I did run it in SPICE just to check, and um, the nominal version, you know, the, high si the low side gives a gain of minus 57, and on the other side we get a gain of 72. Okay, it's not easy to change these in the SPICE simulation. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this class, so I didn't do it. Now, the thing is, is you could measure your temperature in lab, all these values. You could extract these values and then can calculate what your circuit should do. And given that your gain can vary so much, you know, between minus 40 and 100, you know, anything in there you could consider to be a working circuit. Now, you could go back and measure all that, and you should be able to get your hand calculations to match what happened exactly. All right. Now, just one last thought. If the gain is too low when you measure it, the easiest thing to bring it into compliance is just to start increasing RD. And as long as your VDD was large enough to make sure you maintain your VDS min to your constant current source mode, otherwise known as saturation, you should be able to achieve, you know, tweak whatever gain you want. It's just not a circuit that uh, will give you the same thing on a production line. Or you could just buy higher tolerance resistors.